I realized coming here that it's not that Hollywood was persecuting the church as much as it was the church was committing suicide in Hollywood. And it's a you know, big difference. So I basically wrote a, an article about to this effect saying, you know, it's Hollywood is an anti-Christian as much as it's anti-bad art, and we're just giving it schlock. But there are exceptions. Seventh Heaven, one of the WB Network's longest running and highest rated series, revolves around the Camden family. I believe since it's one of the only shows out there that, you know, promotes, you know, good morals and family values that that's why, you know, the fan base and they've been doing it for so long, that's why the fan base base is so big, but and that's the only show they can turn to that has that stuff and a lot of people, you know, love that. It's about a functional family, you know, and, and most families are just functional, so it's kind of refreshing I think for people to see something that's absolutely you know, almost a fantasy in a sense of right. what everybody wishes their family could be like. I just got home. I'm going to get the car filled up and washed. I'll be done in plenty of time to pick up Vincent. Oh, you don't have to pick him up. His parents will drop him off at 7.30. No, that wouldn't be right considering it's your first date. I should pick him up, then drive him over and pick you up. Why? Because Vincent should pick you up. He should come to the door and walk you to the car and open the car door for you. But with you actually driving? Yes, that's how it should work. Take my word for it. The backbone of Seventh Heaven is the parents, played by Stephen Collins and Catherine Hicks, who is a devout Catholic. Both see faith, prayer, and family values as not only the drawing power of their successful show, but also as a personal mission. Catherine Hicks is a perfect example. She's very involved in her parish, very involved in her kids that go to school. And as a result of that, you know, that takes a very important seat in her priority list. I say to young people, it, you know, people aren't praying enough. You really have to pray um, and God will help you. He's just dying to help you. Just ask and miracles can happen all the time. You just have to ask. We are considered, Catherine Hicks and I are considered, you know, we're, we stand for a kind of really strong, good, wonderful parenting involved, loving, supportive, there's a lot of broken hearts in America, and um, this show uh, gives them what they lost and um, inspires current families to hang in there. You have these shows from years ago, uh, Little House on the Prairie, um, I'm trying to think of the, uh, the Waltons, you know, and if you think back, you know, those were some of the longest running television shows, you know, in TV history. at everybody, Daddy. Are you okay? I'm fine. This is just something that a lot of families take for granted. Just having dinner with each other, helping each other out, getting one another through the tough times, being there during the good times. Teaching each other little lessons. Yeah. Because I really do think the show is, uh, is about the difference that people can make if they choose to. And uh, it's, a, it's such a privilege to get to play someone like that. It, it is inspiring. I really liked what Barbara Nicolosi had to say. And for those of you who are not aware, she's actually a devout Roman Catholic, a yeah, former nun, spent yeah. 10 years in a convent. Yeah, yeah, but uh, she said, um, Hollywood isn't anti-Christian, it's anti-bad art. Yeah. Yeah, it's so it's true. on us, I guess, it's to true. come up with good art, and that would have a difference if it's if it's done right. I imagine it's totally true. I mean, we uh, we just saw that show Seventh Heaven, uh, where I was had the opportunity to go on set, and frankly, I mean, it's a show. I don't think it's a great show, but it's been on for ten years. It's got lots of people watching it. It has good values. Here's a family. They're still married. The kids, are, you know, it's like good values. So there's something there. If it's, if it's good writing, I don't think it's great writing, but um, so... Beyond, beyond <laughs> Seventh Heaven, though, beyond some of the things we've seen, because we've seen a few different examples, um, what else have you discovered that's, that's going on as we try to come up with good art? You know what? Joan of Arcadia is a show that just got canceled. It ran for two seasons, produced by uh, Barbara Hall, that is a great show. It's a show that's that not just asking the questions and not just giving good values, it's a show that, sh that very strongly says God is present in your life in every moment. If you're in pain, God is there with you. If you're confused, God is there helping you find the answers. God is there. And I thought, that's a great, uh, in a very uh, popular 
way, she's making a very strong statement. Now, it got canceled because it had low ratings. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's just because, I don't know. So there is some kind of a search going on. And even, you heard it in the, when you were interviewing the cast members of Seventh Heaven, they said a lot of people uh, don't have good families, don't grow up with mother and a father. And when they see this show, it, it, it's a kind of a call, something they felt maybe they always wanted. So that's, that's taking place, and maybe... It's true. So people, people go to the movies, people listen to songs, people watch television because they want, uh, they want to be able to relate. They, they're looking for meaning. You know, you're going to meet this guy named Craig Detwaller. He's a theologian and professor at Biola University, which is the Bible Institute of Los Angeles, um, teaching film and film appreciation. This guy loves films. He, he came to meet God after watching uh, Raging Bull, of all movies. That's so I mean, this guy is just bizarre. <laughs> But okay. he's, I found God through Rocky, by the yeah, way. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> Celeste Stallone. Um, people are looking for meaning, and they are looking for meaning through movies, through television. That's because that's expressing their, their, their yearning for search. Now, I mean, I can tell you all this, but I think it's better if Craig Bedwater tells us. So right, let's hear what he has to say. Yeah, exactly. Screenwriter and professor Craig Detweiler believes that most films express a spiritual search. I, I think a good homily connects deep enough with our everyday experience that the questions and the concepts that it raises stick with us throughout a given week. And I think movies, music, TV do the same thing. We see characters, we see their choices, and uh, we think about our own life and choices that we're faced with every day. The language of popular culture is film. And I think the church has to be able to show that we are bilingual. We speak both kind of religious speak and we, we can also speak film speak and we can draw lines between the two and show how movies are act can actually be modern parables. Jesus was a storyteller, movie makers are storytellers. What are the stories that they're telling and how do they reflect on the stories that Jesus told? I, I think one of the things that movies do best is to portray life as we know it and to ask deep questions about where meaning is found, uh, why are we here on this earth, um, what does it mean to uh, have a purpose in your life. So I think movies are great for asking questions. I'm not sure they're great for answering questions. People seem to be turning to pop culture not just to be inspired but also to find meaning. Humanity is a, a river going by, flowing by, and they don't have time for us to, um, you know, to throw them, a, you know, a piece of corn once in a while, you know, a, or a carrot once in a while. Yeah. We need to be focused on getting their attention and, um, and, and having them look upward. In a sense, the church is having to catch up with the movement of God through pop culture. The spiritual search is on. And it's happening in the movie house, not in the local congregation. And so we, as people of faith, are now having to sort of connect with the culture at large, where the conversation and where the locus of God, where that spiritual search is already going on. Evangelizing can only succeed if there is a congregation willing to listen. Increasingly, the church is realizing that pop culture is not to be abandoned, but utilized. The media was made for the masses. You know, that's why God gave it to us. So, uh, and the Pope has said this, you know, over and over. He said that the church would be sadly remiss if she failed to use these most powerful instruments to bring the gospel to the masses. Well, when the Holy Father encourages uh, people of faith to um, engage in pop culture as a means of connecting with the next generation, I think he is recognizing that um, a vast majority of teens and young people around the world get most of their meaning from movies, music, and TV. This, the Pope on March 1st in 2002 said that the gospel lives always in conversation with culture, for the eternal word never ceases to be present to the church and to humanity. If the church holds back from culture, the gospel itself falls silent.